Okay, so today I'm going to demonstrate how to make a liquid culture broth. Uh, this is for expanding liquid culture or bringing um, mycelium from agar into liquid form. It's a much simpler technique than you may think, and you're pretty much just making a liquid broth that is sterile. That's roughly 4% sugar, and the sugar will feed the mycelium as it continues to grow. Um, you can use all different kinds of sugars for this process. You can, it ranges from honey, dextrose, malt, and you can also add other nutritional sources for the mycelium to get familiar with as well. But uh, we're going to keep it really simple today, and we're doing a malt extract and um, dextrose liquid culture. So we're going to use about 100 milliliters of water, which I have right here. 100 milliliters is also 100 grams of water. So I've weighed out 100 grams of water. And um, you can use a lot more if you'd like and fill up the jar about halfway or so, but I'm just going to do a little bit of liquid culture for today. Then I've weighed out one gram of malt extract and three grams of dextrose. And I'm going to add that put it to our jar. Then you want something to break up the mycelium um, because we're going to have to stir this every day or two. And as it breaks up the mycelium, the mycelium will keep growing from those broken pieces and it will just keep expanding pretty much infinitely. Um, it will also help to oxygenate your liquid in there, which uh, you'll have to do after you pressure cook it. Okay, yeah, so you could technically pre-mix your liquid and sugar and heat it up in a pot and um, dissolve everything, but I feel like that's completely unnecessary because during the pressure cooking process, the liquid's going to be heated up to that temperature and everything's going to dissolve. So um, this is a nice little way around it. So um, let's cover the jar. I'm going to put our little tinfoil hat on top. Now we're ready for the pressure cook. Okay, so we have all three of our jars prepped and ready to go. We have the lids on with the air port and the injection port here so that um, when everything's nice and sterile, we can use that easily. Um, we have our magnetic stir bar in place, which you could have a piece of broken glass or marble in there. We're going to cap it. We're going to place the rack or the trivet inside the injection pot. I've also put about uh, 700 milliliters of water. We're going to stack our jars inside. And we're going to hit pressure cook. We're going to pressure cook it on high pressure for 33 minutes. It seems to be plenty of time to completely sterilize these liquids inside. We're going to put the lid on top. We're going to seal it. And we're going to take off the keep warm setting. And we'll let it do its thing. Okay, so after the cycle has been completed, we're going to let it cool down on its own naturally. At least at 12 hours, but I typically wait overnight. And then the next day they'll be ready to inoculate. Okay, so now it's the next day. Our pressure cooker is fully cooled down. We're going to remove the lid. We're going to take out our jars and inspect them. See if there's any cracks. Looks good to me. As you can see, all the sugar has been dissolved. And we're good to go. Um, so yeah, I've put a magnetic stir bar in here, which is going to make things a lot easier. But uh, you could easily replace that with some broken glass, marbles, um, probably a number of different things. Um, and then before we um, are going to inoculate our liquid culture, we need to oxygenate it. So what we're going to do is we're going to blend everything together here and oxygenate the liquid. And then after that minute, it'll be ready to inoculate with um, liquid culture or agar. And so after it's been inoculated, you want to let it rest and recover for about 48 hours. And then after that, every day to every third day, you want to stir up the culture again, which will allow the mycelium to be broken up into smaller and smaller pieces, which will continue to grow exponentially. It will also help to reoxygenate the liquid and um, exchange out any CO2 that the mycelium has produced. So by using this technique of creating new sterile liquid culture, we can easily expand our previous liquid culture um, exponentially. And um, before you do that, you almost always want to test your cultures on agar to make sure they're clean. And even after you inoculate your new batch of liquid culture, because you can easily run into problems of contamination. And then uh, you don't want to be inoculating grain with contaminated liquid cultures. But um, it's pretty simple and it's not too hard to um, avoid some of these issues that may come up. And um, it will really save you a lot of money in the long run. Okay, best of luck. Hope these techniques help and uh, enjoy.